Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and it's today's video of part two of my Chainsaw Man cosplay build. And if you didn't check out part one, I'll have a link up above, as well as free PDF files that you can download in case you would like to build your own. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on all the painting and the weathering aspects, which we have a ton of details to highlight in this particular build, as well as using epoxies for all the gore that's on the blade and the shininess that you see on his teeth and his gums. So I wanna show you what it takes to paint up Chainsaw Man so let's go ahead and get started. Like I've done with builds in the past, I'm gonna add some super glue to the teeth and the spikes. This will protect the ends and help reinforce them. It's just as simple as applying some glue and then using some scrap foam to move it around the surface. After a light heat treatment, I can start to prime the surface. And to do this, I'm gonna be applying several light coats of Plasti Dip. It's always important when applying Plasti Dip to work in a well-ventilated area and wear your respirator. The Plasti Dip is allowed to dry and cure for a while, and now I can start adding the base colors. For the metallics on this helmet, I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum's Hammered Metal Antique Pewter. This paint is applied to the back of the helmet as well as the blade, but notice that I'm not putting it on thick, I'm doing a very light spray. If you apply it too thick, it could crack over time. I tape on some paper towels to mask off the front section of the helmet. For this area, I'm going to be using Krylon brand Red Oxide Primer. Now this color is considerably duller than the final version that I need, but it's going to act as a good base when I hand paint on some acrylics. For the teeth, I do a light dusting of a Valspar Flat White. Now to hand paint the front of the helmet, and to do that, I'm going to mix together Liquitex Heavy Body Cadmium Red and Cadmium Orange. Looking at multiple references, I chose this color because it's a lot more orange red than it is just straight red. Using a one inch mop brush, I apply the paint to the entire surface. And then I go back and I stipple the paint to give it a unique texture. It's never really talked about whether these pieces are plastic or metal, but for my purposes, I wanted to have more of a plastic looking sheen when it's complete. I use a smaller filbert brush to paint the backs of all these surfaces, as well as the slots on the eyes and the underside around the gums. Now because these are cadmiums, the paint is fairly opaque and it will stain, so really try not to get it onto any of the silver metallic sections. Now I'm going to black wash all of the metallics, and I do that using Liquitex Mars Black, a mop brush, and a ton of water. Once the paint had been applied, I then use a damp paper towel to mop up a lot of the excess pigment. The point here is to get the pigment down into all the details that I created in the foam. The same wash process is also done for his teeth. Now like I had mentioned earlier, I wanted this to kind of have a plastic look, so I'm going to add some Valspar Gloss Sealer. Now normally I don't seal any of my paint jobs unless I'm trying to get this specific look. While I let the sealer dry, I can continue to work on the teeth and to highlight them, I'm gonna be using Liquitex Parchment. This is applied quickly just to give it a simple cover. To give the teeth more depth and color, I'm gonna to mix together raw sienna and cadmium yellow. This mixture is watered down quite a bit and applied to the base of the teeth. Then using a dry brush and a paper towel, I can then feather this pigment down the tooth. It's one of those subtle differences, but just enough to give it a little bit extra detail. I then go back with more parchment, but just on the tips of the teeth. I want to make sure not to cover up the brown wash that I just applied. With the teeth painted, I can now start to work on the gums. And to do that, I just use some straight Liquitex Mars Black. I make sure not to water this down too much because it's a fairly opaque paint and I want it to cover the surface. I use smaller and smaller detail brushes to cover the gums and to get in between the teeth. Using a toothbrush, I decide I want to add a cool splatter effect to the gums and the teeth. For this process, add a ton of water to the pigment and then flick it onto the surface. For any areas that received a little too much, you can go back with a dry brush and remove some of the paint. This splatter technique was also applied where the blade goes into the head. Now for the blade, I wanted it to have a little more contrast, so I started by stippling some Mars Black onto the blade with a mop brush. 
After that I could then apply more of the toothbrush splatter technique. Now to give the teeth and gums a little something special, I'm applying a technique that I used years ago in my Warcraft orc, and that's to mix up and apply some 5 minute epoxy directly to the surface. The epoxy in this state will give it an amazing gloss which works great with all the other sheens that we have going on. Because the epoxy is sticky, be sure to look out for bristles that may come loose from your chip brush. I want to use the epoxy for the gore as well, so after I build it up a little bit on the head and the blade, I mix together some Liquitex Cadmium Red and Mars Black. I mix up some more 5 minute epoxy and add it to the acrylics. By mixing it together the paint will tint the epoxy, but the epoxy makes sure that the paint keeps this glossy sheen. Now using your chip brush, be careful when you're applying this because if you put it any places that you don't want it, it's very difficult to get off. Like some of the other detailed painting techniques I've shown you in the past, this is a technique you don't want to overdo. Be sure to select areas that are visually interesting. But yeah, just some 5 minute epoxy can completely change the look of your piece. I take the handle off the top of the head and I spray it with some Krylon Flat Primer. Once dry it can be placed back on the top and then I mask off the handle on the back. The black flat primer does a great job separating itself from the sheen of the metallics. With the majority of the paint on this helmet complete, I can then go back in with some smaller detail brushes and some Mars Black on places that need it. This will include applying the paint to any of the deep crevices or into any of the smaller details that I'd missed earlier. To cover up the slots on the eyes, I'm going to be putting in some black chiffon fabric. This fabric works great because you can see out, but people can't see in. Using some low temp hot glue, the fabric can be pressed into place. Now I'm not going to add glowing eyes to mine, and I wouldn't recommend it unless you have a handler, because it obstructs most of your vision. But if you want glowing eyes, you can pick up these remote controlled LEDs on Amazon pretty cheap. Then really all you need is half a ping pong ball to help diffuse the light. To keep the LED in place, I just cut a circle out of some stacked 10 millimeter foam. You can see if I was going to leave these glowing eyes in there, it does look pretty cool, but like I said, it does obstruct quite a bit of vision. At this point, you can really only see out of the gaps that are in the teeth. So you all can see the steps that I took to paint and weather my Chainsaw Man cosplay helmet, which means I have one more video in the works, and that's of course going to be his arm blades, because I have to do that to go along with the helmet. Now, hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends and family. And remember, if you're building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram, because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.